Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on how to use Law Clerk for a personal injury practice. I'm going to wait just a few moments as we I wait for the rest of the attorneys who are joining us live for the event to join us. If you are here live, I'd love to hear in the chat where you're joining from. Thanks for taking a little bit of time out of your busy day to be a part of our webinar. Um, I'm going to wait just another moment in case anyone else wants to join live. Hello in Seattle, Washington. Hello. Uh, I am coming to you live from Las Vegas, Nevada. That's where Law Clerk is based, and that is also where I am an attorney. So, okay, um, I know your time is valuable, as is mine. So let's go ahead and get this party started. I'm going to share my screen and uh, kick off our conversation. So, as I mentioned, our program here today is how to use Law Clerk for a personal injury practice. Um, Thank you for joining us. My name is Kristen Tyler. I'm one of the co-founders of Law Clerk. I'm also a practicing attorney. I've practiced in the realm of trusts in the States for a number of years. So right off the bat, quick disclaimer, I'm not a personal injury lawyer, but I have gotten to work with a number of injury lawyers uh, to help create special needs trusts for their clients after they've obtained uh, settlements and also to help manage uh, guardianships for some injured clients who needed that sort of assistance. So in that way, I've gotten to help collaborate with a number of injury attorneys over the years and have always enjoyed those experiences and helping these people who have been injured and who have really had their lives impact. So I applaud the work you guys do. It is so important for these injured individuals and their families and I can't overstate that enough. Now, my guess is if you uh, are joining us here live today, you already know what Law Clerk is, <laughs> uh, but if you are by chance watching this on the replay later on on YouTube, then uh, just real quick, at Law Clerk, we help connect busy attorneys, mostly solos and small firms, with our nationwide network of freelance lawyers. You can hire them on demand when you need help for project-based work or for subscription-based work. We'll talk about that later on. Uh, you can find us at lawclerk.legal. There's no fee to sign up and there's no monthly fee. So if you haven't already checked it out and made an account, I invite you to do that. And uh, that's the real quick overview. Of course, we have a ton more videos and resources to give you an overview of what Law Clerk is and how we can help. But today we're really gonna focus in on this personal injury practice in specific um, and go from there. So my guess is if you're here and you're an attorney, you are um, always evaluating what's the best use of your time. You know, we all only have 24 hours in a day and how can we get the most work done and help our clients and, uh, you know, also drive revenue into our practices. So my, you've probably also gathered that outsourcing can be a very profitable tool. If you haven't already incorporated outsourcing into your business model, we are seeing more and more lawyers turn to that as they are trying to staff their cases and get top level help to get great results for their clients. Uh, you know, outsourcing makes a lot of sense for a lot of reasons. It allows you to get the help you need when you need it, to only pay for help when you need it, and also to tap into a high level of expertise. Uh, when people ask, well, what can I outsource? The sky is really the limit. These are a few examples here. And I actually found a lot of examples for your practice area because we have so many uh, injury attorneys that do use our service. So it was easy to find examples. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and launch into some of those. But uh, really, the sky's the limit. Whatever your pain point is in your practice, there's a way to outsource that and get help. So, you know, maybe before we go any further, you even want to take a glimpse at your to-do list. And what are the things on your to-do list that have been sitting there a little bit longer than you'd like because you either can't find the time to do them or maybe you don't want to do them. And that's okay, too. Anything that falls into the category of I don't have time to do it or I don't want to do it, those are prime examples of things that you can and should be outsourcing. So keep that in mind as we go ahead. Um, as far as Law Clerk, it's really easy to get started. You simply register for an account. You pick your first project to delegate and post, and you get rolling. And you do get matched with what we call a dedicated Law Clerk advisor to help you along the way. So as soon as you sign up for your account, that advisor will reach out and help you with all of those steps. So don't be overwhelmed by the process itself. We're here to help and we've got your back. All right, so as I mentioned, I found a lot of examples. So I really wanna dig into those and don't worry about trying to write these down quickly um, because we have a resource on our website that I'll show you at the end where you can find all of these and more. So I really just wanna get your wheels thinking about ways that other injury attorneys are successfully delegating and managing their workflow so that maybe some of these would work for you. All right, so right off the bat, 
obviously a lot of cases start out and you need some research done. So this was an example of a research memo involving an ATV accident case in Florida, and the attorney needed help on uh, examining several liability issues, wanted someone with an insurance defense background or a plaintiff's background uh, to have that keen eye in helping evaluate the case. So this can be a great way that you can leverage the time and talent of a freelancer. If you have a potential new case, maybe you're debating whether you wanna take it on, you, you need some help to examine the merits of it, that can be very time consuming. That's a great thing to outsource on Law Clerk and get some help to help decide um, if it's a winning case or not. Uh, obviously, after you decide to take a case, the next step for a lot of injury cases is to send a demand letter. And we see a ton of demand letters. In fact, one of our top users, uh, I just saw he logged into his account this morning and posted three of them. Um, so, you know, this was a demand letter for a little over $1,000, and it was involving an auto accident case with injuries to four separate occupants. Again, was looking for someone well versed in writing to an insurance adjuster to maximize potential value of the case. Uh, they wanted someone creative and persuasive in their approach to writing who included visuals in the letter and could give a well thought out and impactful settlement demand. So if you get bogged down with getting those demand letters written, or if you'd like someone to come in with a fresh approach and help write those, that's another great thing to delegate. Of course, if you don't settle before litigation, inevitably you're going to have to prepare and file a complaint. That can be another great way, one to delegate, especially because chances are you likely have a template maybe from another case. So you could delegate it to the freelance lawyer, give them a sample complaint that you've used in a different case, and also uh, you know, provide them with your client intake notes, uh, the underlying facts of the case so that they can customize that complaint for you and get it filed in time ahead of your uh, statute limitations. Okay. Of course, after that complaint's filed, you're going to move into the discovery phase. And um, I mean, <laughs> we see so much work in terms of discovery. It's unbelievable. Um, I think one common thread in every litigator I meet is everyone pretty much has the same level of disdain for the discovery process. It's a necessary evil in any litigation case. And the good news is that that's another place that you're getting bogged down. Um, you're having jams in your workflow. There are a lot of opportunities for you to outsource that type of work and get help. So maybe you need help preparing discovery demands that you want to send to the uh, opposing party. Uh, you know, that's a great one for you to outsource. And this is just one example we saw on the, a flat fee of $400. All of the project-based work on Law Clerk is done on a flat fee, but obviously, depending on the complexity of your discovery demands and whether you're going to provide them a sample template, maybe you want to pay somewhere more like 250 or if it's really complex, you're obviously going to pay more, but we can help you with the pricing. This is just one example. Uh, maybe instead you need help responding to discovery. So maybe you get some uh, interrogatories from the insurance company and your client, you know, you send those to the client and they write up a really lengthy email or word document with all of their responses a lot of which are probably pretty emotional you know you need someone to dig through those and find the relevant information that needs to be conveyed but also to form up any objections and to include those uh, again very time consuming work great to delegate to a freelance lawyer if you don't have an associate on your team to send that off to okay obviously in when you're dealing with an injury case medical records are key. And uh, this can be a great way for you to get expertise to help you review them and get a winning edge in your case. We have a number of freelancers in our system who have some sort of medical background, a number of former nurses, uh, people with dual degrees, et cetera. And a lot of injury attorneys are seeing great success by delegating and collaborating with some of our freelancers who do have a medical background to have them review the records provide some, and provide summaries and reviews that they can then work into demand letters or complaints or whatever it may be. So this is a great way where you can tap into expertise and get um, excellent work. Here's another medical record summary review. This one was 1,100 pages, so the price was more. Um, and they needed a summary of treatment of their client at two different hospitals. So great thing to get off of your plate and have a freelance lawyer do. Likewise, later on, sometimes you need to get some depo transcripts uh, reviewed and summarized. You know, maybe you're heading to trial and you need those ready to go. So you have impeachment testimony or you can easily uh, access certain uh, relevant passages of the transcript when needed. Another great thing to send off to uh, a freelancer. This was a pretty short one, 120 pages, um, an injury case aboard a flight. 
Um, and so they, they only paid $250 for this work, but it's very affordable. And again, it's a huge time saver because, you know, those last days when you're getting ready for trial can be uh, very overwhelming. There's a million things to do and, and the days fly by. So this is a great thing to get off your deck. Uh, jury instructions, another very uh, complex area that a lot of attorneys want help. And maybe you, maybe you have jury instructions, but you just need another, an extra set of eyes to review them. You know, that's kind of what this attorney was doing here. They said they needed someone to review Wyoming Supreme Court decisions, dealing with evidentiary issues on personal injury damages and supplement the, the instructions they had already prepared. So basically they'd already prepared the instructions. They wanted someone else just to do another review across the board to make sure there's nothing they were missing to make sure they were ready to roll. Here, uh, you know, maybe you have email correspondence uh, that's somehow relevant in the case and you need that reviewed and summarized. Another very time consuming task to, to delegate. Uh, of course, we see a lot of things happening in the realm of motion work, whether it's motions for summary judgment or oppositions to motions for summary judgment, or in, again, in the days leading up to trial, if you get a whole bunch of motions in limine, you need help opposing those. We see a, anything that you need help with in terms of a motion is a prime candidate to outsource and put on law clerk. Uh, this was one example of a case where there were four motions in limine uh, seeking to preclude a number of different pieces of evidence and testimony and they needed some help to research and draft the oppositions. 800 bucks, really great price point for this project and uh, a major time saver. Maybe you know, you're not gearing it for trial, but instead you're preparing for mediation. Um, uh, this can be a great chance for you to get, again, a fresh set of eyes, a, a new perspective on the case that you've been living with your client for a long time to have someone write a persuasive and compelling mediation brief to hopefully sway the mediator to um, push things in your client's direction. More trial prep examples, if you're going that way, jury instructions, witness lists, uh, last minute research or, or more motions, lots of different ways that we can help save you time as you're preparing for trial. And of course, if things don't go your way at trial, then you may be looking at an appellate brief. And we see a ton of work in this area as well. I have countless examples. You know, We see those anywhere from around $1,500 and up. Uh, we've had them for $20,000 and more. So don't underestimate the sophistication level of a lot of our freelance writers. We have a number of freelancers who really specifically specialize just in doing appellate work. And so it's, again, a great time for you to collaborate with them to get a new perspective on your case, a fresh voice uh, as you take the case up to the appellate level. So these are a ton of examples. And I told you at the start, don't worry. Oh, Sorry, one more, I forgot. Marketing, which, what personal injury lawyer is not constantly thinking about marketing? And one of the things that can really help with your SEO is if you're continually putting up fresh content on your blog, which then gets pumped out into your social media feeds. Uh, so this attorney uh, hired a freelance writer to write a number of blog posts, a thousand words each on six topics. Uh, so when you do the math on here, it looks like they were paying about 75 bucks per topic, which is really cheap, really affordable. And this is a great way for you to get additional content, fresh content. I've even seen people um, go out quickly and hire a freelancer to write a blog article. Anytime there's a kind of relevant story in the news, again, so it's timely, it's relevant, you're keeping your fresh content to get good SEO uh, boost. And that's a great thing to delegate as well. So all of these examples and more are on our website. If you go to lockwork.legal and up in this dark navy banner at the top there, you'll see attorney resources. And guess what we have there? Attorney resources, that's right. Um, but one of my favorite things on the attorney resources page is if you scroll down, you will find our sample projects by area of law. And yes, we have a guide specifically for personal injury. So if these examples are giving you some ideas and you want more, go download a copy of that guide. There's no put in your email or anything. You can just go grab a copy. It's really a fantastic resource. And at the same time, if you practice in any other areas by chance, you know, family law, criminal defense, whatever, we have a guide for pretty much every area of law we can think of. Go check it out and find ways that other lawyers are succeeding with delegation so that you can do the same. So uh, another big question that we get from a lot of lawyers is a lot of lawyers make the mistake of looking at outsourcing as an expense, okay? But it can be a way to make money. Now, that being said, I know that a lot of lawyers in the injury space are working on a contingency fee agreement. So it's a little bit different with you guys when you are you know, not billing hourly, 
but this can still be a very affordable, flexible way to get work done. Keep in mind if for some reason you are doing work on an hourly basis, the ethics rules, case law, opinions, et cetera, everything says that an attorney may bill the time of a freelance lawyer to their client at a reasonable market rate. That comes under model rule 1.5. So the key thing here is reasonable. And you can determine what a reasonable rate means for you based on your practice area, your geographic market, the sophistication of the work, the, you know, the number of years the freelance lawyer has been practicing, et cetera. All of those go into determining a reasonable rate. Here's an hourly example just to make it come to life. You know, maybe you hire a freelancer to write a motion for you. You pay them a flat fee, a thousand bucks. They still keep track of their time because in this instance, you are billing hourly for whatever reason, or maybe you still track your hours uh, in case you ever have to justify a fee petition. I hear about that once in a while from injury attorneys. Um, so you're still going to get that data you need about the time worked on that project in case you have to include it in a fee petition or if you are billing a client hourly. Let's say in this example, you determine that the reasonable market rate is $200 per hour, which probably seems really low, but just go with me. It's easy math. This would mean that you could reasonably bill your client $1,700 for the work. Keeping in mind you paid $1,000, you're still driving an additional $700 of profit into your firm. And this is just on one project. So imagine if you did this on three or four projects a month over the course of a whole year, it could really generate a large additional stream of revenue for your firm without you burning the midnight oil and without you taking on additional overhead to, fire, to hire someone full-time. This is a way for you to get work done, make more money without adding to your underlying overhead. So that's a win-win in my example, or in my opinion, for any solo attorney or small firm. Now, a few more points, and then we're almost to the end. I know, again, I know your time's valuable, so I really appreciate you hanging out today. When it comes to success at Law Clerk, I think there's a couple of things that are really important. Working with your advisor is one of those. Another one of those is taking advantage of our Teams feature. So early on, some of our early adopters for Law Clerk said, you know, this is great. This is just what I've been looking for, but I found a few people I like, and I wanna be able just to go back to them on repeat time and time again when I have similar pieces of work. And so what we did was build a feature we called Teams that allows you to do that. So when you find a freelancer that you like, you can favorite them, add them to your team. You can create and organize a number of teams. And that way, when you have a the same or similar type of work, you can send it to them. Some of our top users have uh, found really creative, innovative ways to use this feature. So for example, uh, we have a lot of our top users who don't practice just in one area of law, but they practice in a couple. And so they build different teams of freelancers for each of those areas of law that they practice. So maybe, again, maybe example, you do have a personal injury practice, but you also do a little criminal defense and a little family law. You could build a team of freelancers for each of those practice areas. Another idea is maybe, maybe you are strictly just a personal injury attorney, that's your core practice. Then you might wanna build teams around different skill sets different types of skills that you need from time to time. So maybe you need people with eagle eyes that can do document review. You need a research team, a discovery team, a motion practice team, a trial prep team, an appellate team. You get the idea, but you could find people that fit these different skills and do really amazing work to build teams around skill sets. Last, another area is if you, um, you know, maybe you take on a really big case, a class action, uh, where you have a lot of plaintiffs as clients and you need a team to help manage that, you could build a team to work with over the life of the case. And maybe that's just one freelancer, maybe that's two or three. I have an example I'll, I'll mention later on of someone who uh, brought on five of our freelancers to help with a big case. But you know, you can then continually send those freelancers different projects as, as different phases of work progress. So that's another way to build teams to work with over the life of a case and to get that work done. Now, if you want to take all of this to the whole next level, if you're like, okay, this sounds really great, but maybe you know that you have 30 or 40 hours of work to send to a freelance lawyer every month regularly, then you might be interested in looking at our new virtual associate subscription program. We launched this earlier this year and have been blown away by the response. This is something that a lot of attorneys and law firms have been looking for, and it's been a great solution for them to get work done. So the way subscription works is you um, get in touch with us and give us some basic information about how many hours of month you need of help, uh, the kind of skills you're looking for, the practice area, and then you get to set your level of what level of expertise you wanna pay for that subscription. 
Um, the program runs in increments of 10 hours. So you can hire anywhere from just 10 hours a month of help, or you can go all the way up to 160 hours a month. Um, you can select if you want a junior attorney, we charge that at $75 an hour, an experienced attorney with five or more years of experience at $100 an hour, or a more senior level, partner level attorney, we bill that at $140 an hour. It's worth every penny. Some of the folks that are doing work in that category are incredible. So if you know your practice is booming, you're continually feel like you're drowning with all the things you need to get done, maybe you want to talk to us about if subscription makes sense for you and give it a try. There's no long-term contracts. It's a 30-day cancellation. So if you try it out and for whatever reason it doesn't work, no problem, just a 30-day cancellation. So again, this is just another one of the many flexible, affordable ways we are trying to match you up with the talent you need when you need it the way you need it. So check out our virtual subscription program. It's a, it's a game changer. So, all right, guys. So if you have any questions, I would be happy to answer those if you want to start teeing those up in the chat for those of you who are joining me live. But a few last resources I want to mention. Uh, I've mentioned a few times your dedicated law clerk advisor. Every hiring attorney who signs up for an account is automatically matched up with an advisor. If you have an account already, and for some reason you haven't been able to make time to speak with your advisor, I encourage you to do that. They are a wealth of knowledge. Each of our advisors works with a couple hundred of attorneys nationwide. And so they see the best practices that other attorneys are using to get work done and to successfully delegate. They can draw on those to help coach you and guide you through the way to find your own ways of delegating and outsourcing successfully. So definitely lean on your advisor. They're a resource, a great resource, complimentary. There's no charge for that. Um, and if you don't have an account yet, know that when you, you sign up, you will be matched with someone and they will be there to help you every step of the way. There's no monthly fees. So whether you're signing up to hire help or you're signing up to freelance, there's no sign up fee. There's no monthly fee to be a part of Law Clerk. You're only paying when you're hiring work done, whether that's on a project by project basis or through our new subscription program. Uh, and lastly, for all of the project based work, we offer a satisfaction guarantee. Um, so if you're new to outsourcing, you want to post a project, but you're still nervous, know that we offer a satisfaction guarantee on every single project. So if things don't go the way you expected, uh, you know, we want to hear about it and we want to do everything we can to make that right for you, whether that means giving you a refund, finding someone else to complete the project or both. We have got your back and we want you to have a great experience. So please know that. All right. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope this got, uh, you know, made some light bulbs light up in your mind of ways that you can get some of your work off of your, your plate and give it to one of our talented freelance lawyers. Um, if you haven't already done so, I definitely encourage you to connect with us on your favorite social media platform. We're of course on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn. Um, if you like learning by videos like this, we have a ton of videos on our YouTube channel. You can easily find that. We also have a, a deep, uh, a very long video on the new subscription program if you wanna learn some more. So definitely check out those resources and don't hesitate to lean out to us if you have any questions. The whole Lockhart team is here to help you succeed and uh, to help guide you along the way. So I appreciate your time today. Thank you for joining me and have a great rest of your day.